So in this session, we are going to learn a concept called Fermat's theorem. But even before going into the theorem, I want to ask you a question. What is the result of this computation? 213 raised to the power 522 mod 523. So this is a very big number and you can't use a calculator to compute this. But I can very well say this is equal to 1. I can say that the remainder is equal to 1 by just applying the Fermat's theorem. So what is this Fermat's theorem? If P is a prime number and A is a positive integer not divisible by P, then we can say A power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. There are two conditions you need to check before applying the theorem. That is P should be a prime number. And the next important condition is P should not divide A. P should not divide A or A is not divisible by P. Then we can very well say this holds true. That is A power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. Otherwise, how you can write this? This is nothing but A power P minus 1 mod P is equivalent to 1 mod P. So what I have applied here? A is congruent to B mod P can be written as A mod P is equal to B mod P. So I have just applied that. I have written it like this. So understand this better. Let's take an example. Let's take A to be 2 and P to be 3. And we are checking these two important conditions. One, P is a prime number. Yes. And P does not divide A and a is not divisible by p so even that is true so we'll apply the values here and check a is 2 p is 3 3 minus 1 mod 3 this is equal to 1 mod 3 so what is 2 power 3 minus 1 mod 3 it is nothing but 2 square mod 3 or you can say 4 mod 3 is equal to 1 mod 3 what is 4 mod 3? Reminder is 1. What is 1 mod 3? It's 1. So this holds. So what we understand is when P is a prime number and A is an integer not divisible by P, we can very well say this. That is A power P minus 1 mod P is equal to 1. Right? We have proved that. Let's take another example in Fermat's theorem. Can you tell me the answer for this? 2 power 10 by 11. What is the answer for this? 2 power 10 divided by 11. So here, this can be written as 2 power 10 mod 11. This is actually of the form a power p minus 1 mod p. So before applying the Fermat's theorem and coming to a conclusion, we have to check two things, whether P is a prime number, 11 is a prime number, and whether A is divisible by P, 2 is not divisible by 11. So even that is satisfied. So in that case, we can very well apply Fermat's theorem here. You can go and very well verify that. If you find 2 power 10, the result of 2 power 10 is 1024, 1024 mod 11. What is the reminder? That is 1. So I have also written a simple Java code to substantiate my result. It's math.pow 2 power 10. So we give 2 raised to the power 10 mod 11. If I run this code, it finds 2 power 10 and divides it by 11. The result, the reminder is 1. So we have proved that. So even without that computation, we can very well directly conclude that this is equal to 1 by Fermat's theorem. So what's the solution here? 
So this is again of the form a power p minus 1 mod p. So p, is this a prime number? 523 is a prime number. And uh, is 213 divisible by 523? No. So these two conditions are fine. And uh, you see here 213 power 522 mod 523. This is exactly of the form a power p minus 1 mod p. So we can say this result, the remainder is equal to 1. So without performing any of the computations of these huge numbers, by just applying the Fermat's theorem, we can say that this is the remainder. And this will be very useful when we go in for algorithms in cryptography in the later sections. I hope you all have understood what is Fermat's theorem.